Everyone knows the pain of a website crash. For site visitors, it's a nuisance. For marketers and website managers, it's a nightmare. Stick around to discover how high online traffic can crash your site, why it isn't just about the number of visitors, and the three most common situations that lead to the nightmare that is a website crash. <laughs> Website crashes are all around us. You've seen the headlines. Black Friday sales crash Walmart site. Tax time rush crashes IRS. Prime Day deals crash Amazon. Beyonce tour crashes ticketing site. People know from headlines like this that high traffic can crash a website, but few know what's going on behind the scenes. So how does high traffic crash websites? Websites are hosted on servers. We call these servers because their job is to serve content to visitors. When you click a link, press play on a video, or enter your password, you'll send a request to the site server, and the server responds to that request. Now, like everything in this world, servers have a capacity. They can serve a certain number of people, a certain number of things at a time. This number is limited, even for giants like Amazon and Walmart. Most site managers know their typical traffic levels and ensure their servers have enough processing capacity to handle it. But during periods of peak demand, such as Black Friday, a major ticketing sale, or the launch of stimulus checks, the level of interest can exceed the capacity the organization was prepared for. Like piling more and more people onto the second story of a house, or a bridge, or even just your kitchen table, the servers can handle the load right up until a point, and then they collapse. When servers are overloaded with requests, they'll slow down, freeze, or crash entirely. They're no longer able to do their job, no longer able to serve visitors' content. And that's why you'll be met with a page that never loads, the wheel of death, or a 503 error. So this is the simplest version of how high traffic crashes a website. But there's more to the picture than just that. The thing is, not all site requests are created equal. And not all requests go to the same place. Let's look at what that means. 10,000 people on your site could crash it, but it could also be fine. What's important is what these people are doing. Think of your site like a restaurant. A large restaurant may be able to comfortably seat 100 people. But if the restaurant only has five waiters, it can only take five orders at a time. If it only has 10 fry pans, it can only cook so many dishes at a time. If it only has one cash register, only one person can pay at a time. In a restaurant, operational capacity is different from overall capacity. It's not just how many people you can squeeze in the room, it's how many you can comfortably serve. Websites have the same limitations. While a site may scale up its servers to handle many visitors, if these visitors flood certain site features or make CPU heavy database calls or all rush to pay at the same time, weak points arise. These weak points are called bottlenecks and they're one of the main culprits behind traffic induced site crashes. Some common site bottlenecks include payment gateways, database calls, performance intensive features like an advanced search or recommended for you panel and synchronous processes like updating inventory once a payment is processed. So when do websites crash from high traffic? There's three scenarios we typically see that cause traffic to overwhelm an e-commerce site. Number one is the unexpected traffic spike. This can come from a TV appearance, sudden bot traffic, a viral social media post, a celeb wearing your item, or even just an unexpectedly successful marketing campaign. Number two is the major sale. This can occur during any flash sale, but happens most often on days like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. This is one of the most common causes of e-commerce crashes. Number three is the product drop or collection release. It happens when the new iPhone hits stores, when Nike or Adidas drops a hype sneaker, or when a new brand launches. So to summarize, websites crash from high traffic because of too much demand on their servers. Every site has its limits, and when those limits are exceeded, the site crashes. But remember, it isn't just about the number of visitors. Overall capacity is different from operational capacity. Most site crashes come when sudden surges of traffic hit vulnerable bottlenecks in your site. If you've enjoyed this video, check out the other videos in our series and head to qit.com for more content like this.